Welcome to Beyond the Lab, a series by the Office of Career Development within the Biomedical Research Education Training Department of the Vanderbilt University School of Medicine. My name is Kate Stewart, and I'm here today with Nara Dean Lewis, who graduated in 2011 in cancer biology. So, welcome back. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So, tell me about um, what you did here at Vanderbilt. Yeah, so I started in 2005, um, and I worked in the lab with Dr. Keith Wilson in gastroenterology, and we studied the immune response to H. pylori. So it was really um, more immunology and microbiology than cancer biology, but um, it was a, a great question to work on because it's really sort of surprising that this bug can infect you and your immune system just doesn't know how to deal with it. So, I don't know, it kept me motivated, and, uh, but it was, it, was, it was fun. It was fun. Okay, so after your graduate training, what did you do after that, and what led you to where you are now? Yeah, so I did a postdoc uh, starting in 2011 at Beringer Ingelheim Pharmaceuticals. Uh, it's a really large pharmaceutical company. Uh, the headquarters are based in Germany, uh, but we were in... Uh, our site is in Ridgefield, Connecticut. So I worked in the Department of Autoimmune and Inflammatory Diseases, and they brought me in there because they wanted someone with expertise on monocyte macrophage biology and to sort of apply that to autoimmune diseases. So it was a three-year contract as a postdoc, and um, it was really quite a different environment, very different from what I experienced here, but uh, very good science, and, and really just, it was, it was a, a great learning experience. I really enjoyed it. So what do you do now? Yeah, so now I am a scientist in the Cellular and Translational Immunology Group at EMD Serono, so sort of a mid-sized pharmaceutical company um, working on autoimmune diseases. So it's drug discovery. It's, uh, you know, we're trying to solve the world's really big uh, uh, problems and and so it keeps me motivated. Uh, so I'm, I'm still sort of crossing over between the bench and sort of my desk. I'm not, I'm not a people manager, but I'm still doing experiments to sort of ask if a certain target is important in a mechanism or in a, important in a certain disease. Uh, and so that's, yeah, so it's, I, I really enjoy it. I really enjoy it. Okay, so what does your daily life look like? Like, what are you doing when you get there in the morning? Or, you know, what kind of meetings do you have? Yeah, that's, that's an excellent question. So I wake up, I look in the mirror, I put on my cape, and I go and save the world. <laughs> no, but uh, <laughs> at least that's how it feels, you know. I, I think it's always good to keep motivating yourself. So, But no, so typically I'll, I'll usually have a plan on what I have to do for the week. So I, my responsibilities are currently uh, pushed across several different projects. And projects are basically different targets which we think may be important in disease. And I'm trying to solve that question. Is it really important in disease? So it'll be experiments to determine, like for instance, if there's uh, a disease in which T cells proliferate too much and you wanna stop them from doing that. So we'll set up an experiment to test T cell proliferation and then we try to inhibit that target to see if it actually plays a role in T cell proliferation. Then we'll compare different compounds or different inhibitors to see how good they work, uh, whether they do what they're supposed to do. Um, so that's sort of experimental based approach, which I think is sort of half of my time is, is, is that. And actually now I developed sort of a new skill set after leaving Vanderbilt, and that's sort of surrounding bioinformatics. So I spend a uh, probably maybe half of my time now analyzing large gene expression data sets. So basically trying to determine what's different between a disease and healthy patients. Also, can we develop certain gene signatures to determine which patients are more likely to respond to our drug? So lots of um, problem solving, trying to answer some big questions, hands-on still, uh, but yeah, certainly lots of meetings. We work in big groups. Uh, we collaborate a lot. Uh, so there's usually there's some meetings already on my schedule where we discuss data, new data, new ideas. We try to come up with new targets uh, and just to see the progress of, of a project and how it's moving along. Okay. Yeah. So how is your current role a good fit for you? Yeah, uh, that's, that's a good question. So 
it's a good fit for me because of the impact, potential impact that can be had by working in drug discovery. It's 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 such a big, um, it, 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 the possibilities are really huge there. I mean, if you can invent a drug and treat people, and and people feel better, you know, it's you know it's amazing how many people you know how many people have taken an MMR vaccine or something like that. So if I can I can have any role in something like that, I mean, I would feel I mean that'll make me feel great. And, and I, I really feel that, you know, I've only got so much time, so I want to just use it in the best way possible. So I'm, you know, trying to make a big impact on something that can be important to a lot of people. So I think along those lines, because that's our daily goal, we're trying to figure out how to discover a new drug that, that will benefit patients. So with that in mind, every day, it sort of keeps me going and motivates me that, you know, I'm doing the right thing and, and you know, keep pushing along. You know, it's, it, I mean, the problem is that most drugs fail. They don't actually work. So you have to sort of self-motivate yourself. But at least we're working on and trying to do something big. So I think, yeah, so that's, that's the main driver for me, just trying to have a big impact. And this is certainly one way to, to go about it. Good. Okay, so a lot of trainees um, think they want to work for a pharmaceutical company doing drug development. Those are hard jobs to find. How did you find your job? What are some of the tips that you would give trainees as they're trying to pursue that career field? Yeah, that's that's a great great question. So especially for a postdoc position, they're just few and far between. Um, my strategy was basically to look very broad. So one of the primary problems people have is that they don't even know what are the names of different pharmaceutical companies. So that's the first step. Right, so basically, I just got a list from Wikipedia of the top 50 pharma companies based on their revenue. And I basically went to their, each one of their websites, very broad, and I went to see what jobs were available. Did they have postdoc positions? Many companies don't have it. So if I found something that I thought would be even closely related to what my skill set was, then I would apply and, and just try it out. And that was my strategy, and it worked for me. I, I applied to several jobs. And I was very fortunate to get uh, the one I landed at Bering Green Line Pharmaceuticals, which, which was just fantastic. Yeah. Okay, good. So tell me about some skills that you had to develop after you left Vanderbilt um, to really be an asset to your, your company, both in your postdoc and then in your current training, I mean, in your current position. Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. So uh, I would say one of the skills, not necessarily that I had to learn, but one that I think really helps me uh, in, in doing well at my company is developing this additional skill set of bioinformatics. So it's something that's not very common in, in our group. Uh, and even for this field at large, uh, it's just not common that a, a scientist will move sort of to that field. Usually you find someone with a computational biology background mm -hmm. sort of moving in and trying to use that to solve biology problems. But I found that there was a disconnect between computational biologists and the biologists in which they had trouble communicating with one another. So I thought, if I can fill in this middle space, maybe I can help move things along and, and have an important impact on the project. Mm -hmm. And so that's a skill set I've developed, uh, which I'm still learning, to be honest, but it's, it's been quite fruitful for me. Uh, another thing was, I think, uh, just learning how to... Uh, do the very best experiment the first time. Like, uh, I try not to spend many times uh, working on things that don't work so well. You know, you, you, you find a way to get the experiment to work extremely well, and then when you've got it working really well, you do it really big. So I like to put multiple donors together, like uh, donor, if I'm t testing cells from different patients, I'll put multiple and do them all, you know, all at one shot, you know, so lots of high throughput stuff that I really... I didn't have much access to here at Vanderbilt. Probably had access, but I didn't have much experience with at Vanderbilt. But try to do things in a high throughput manner to test, you know, a, a lot of things at once. So sort of become more efficient in doing research. Okay, good. Yeah. So you had a great postdoc. You were in a postdoc <laughs> for a, an industry, um, and I think a lot of people would want to be in that postdoc. But could you do what you do now without a postdoc? Is that something that... Um, that trainees could pursue right out of grad school, what you do now? That, that's excellent. Yeah, so 
I think it's possible to get a scientist position at a pharma company without a postdoc. Do you mean like without a postdoc in general or just a different type of postdoc? Any postdoc. Should a, should a should a trainee pursue a postdoc if they're interested in being an immunologist? Oh sure, yeah, you need that. You need that training. <laughs> you, need it. you know, it's it's almost sort of a requirement. I, you know, you'd have you'd have a hard time developing the right skills, I think, and just really proving to others that you really know how to do research without those postdoc years. Yeah. Uh, it's sort of a necessity, I think. Uh, okay, I could be wrong. Okay, good. All right, so I'm sure you do a lot of networking in your career field. What does that look like for you? <laughs> yeah, so that's one of the strange things about pharmaceutical companies is that we're all competing with one another. <laughs> so you meet someone at a conference. <laughs> you don't want to give too much information, but at the same time you want to connect. Uh, it's, it's a little tricky. But so my sort of networking, I don't know, I try to do a good network within the company. And it's, it's big companies. There's so many different positions there and so many different functionalities. I don't really understand even all the groups that are there. But so you make some impact on a project and then you get to meet people who play different roles on the project. So you'll be working with the chemists, some DMPK guys or something like that. So you work with these different groups and you meet different people. And as you work on new projects, you sort of expand that list because you get different team members. And so, um, you know, I try to connect with people on LinkedIn uh, but I think this face-to-face -face sort of working with people in projects is, you know, a good way to go. Okay, good. Yeah. So talk about your work-life balance. What does that look like for you? Yeah, so I have a wife and three kids at home. And uh, uh, my wife is superwoman. So she really, she really makes these things possible for me. Um, you know, I, I, I don't work super long hours, even though I do bring work home. And so after the kids go to bed, I, I can do extra work. But, you know, I think for any job, if you're putting in eight hours and you have, you know, 30 minute commute, you know, by the time you get home in the evening, you know, the kids have to go to bed in a couple hours. It's, it's just tough, you know. So I'm fortunate that my wife is able to stay at home. And so she kind of takes care of everything and, and is super supportive. And allows me to really focus my, I guess, brain energy on on, <laughs> on my job. But, uh, you know, so I try to make sure on the weekends to give the kids something exciting to do. Make sure their homework and stuff is done. But I would say that in pharma, the hours are maybe even shorter than what people do in academia. You know, an eight-hour workday is very typical, you know. So, and it's, you know, it's no shame in leaving at five o'clock. Um, but... I do tend to, to try to do more in the evenings. Uh, <laughs> I can't help it, but but uh, I'd say it's, I don't know, at least with our situation, with my wife staying at home, it works. And uh, she's, she's very supportive. So she's, I'm just grateful that she, she's able to help me there. Yeah. Well, good. So what are some words of wisdom that you would give current trainees um, if they're interested in your path um, yeah. to your position now? So lots of words. Not so sure about the wisdom, <laughs> but I think once you figure out what you want to do, then, or at least what general direction, the first thing you should do is to check what current jobs are open right now in pharma. See what's out there and then try to design your life to sort of fill that role. I think that's, that's the first thing. I think that's, you know, beginning with the end in mind. And Secondly, and, I, and maybe most importantly, you, you have to do great work. No matter what you're doing, you have to do great work. You've got to go the extra mile. You've got to be exceptional. And you, and you really got to put the hard work in. You know, you, if, if you're not uh, a hard worker, if, if you don't do good work, you, you, you won't stay long in pharma. Yeah. You know, that's well, thanks for your advice and your tips. We appreciate you coming back. Excellent. Good to be here. Yeah. Thanks.